Hello, I am Anuruddha. I am a Google Summer of Code student joining from University of Morocco, Sri Lanka. And I am working on the distributed caching support project on MIFO 6 platform. Through this video clip, I will demonstrate how caching can add value to improve the performance of MIFO 6 platform. Uh, first of all, I will give a brief introduction to the project. Uh, MIFOS X is built with multi-tenancy concept in which a single MIFOS X deployment can serve several organizations. It is very important to consider the performance optimization particularly in this multi-tenant environment. The main focus of this project is to implement a distributed caching system to cache the eligible data layer services. Since MIFOS X is a stateless application, adding caching can contribute in a greater degree to improve the API processing time. However, the tricky part of this project is addressing the multi-tenant nature. Uh, in order to demonstrate, uh, today I am going to use Spring Insight to monitor two MIFOS X instances uh, with uh, one with no cache and uh, the other one with caching enabled. You can read more details about this project from the following URL. Uh, before moving into the analysis, uh, I would like to give a brief overview of Spring Insight. Spring Insight is a new technology for visualizing the runtime behavior of Java web applications. With Insight, you could perform deep dive analysis of your web application without any code modification, even while it's running. In summary, Spring can be used to see the SQL executed for any page request and uh, to find pages which are executing slowly and drill into the course. Also, we can use Spring Insight to verify our applications transactions are working as designed. So having that introduction to Spring Insight, I would also like to introduce what caching and how it works in Spring Framework. Uh, when we first send a request to a particular endpoint, the usual procedure is to execute the method and return the requested resource. If the requested resource and the endpoint is cached, before executing the method, Spring will check whether the requested resource exists on its defined cache storage. For that, it will use uh, a key which is generated using according to the method argument. If there is no match, uh, then it will execute the method and store the return value primarily on a hash map uh, which is basically kind of a key value pair store. If you send another request with the same key values, then Spring will again check its cache storage with that key value for a possible cache it. If it's there, then there is no need of method execution and it will return that cached value without going to data layer services and, and uh, without executing the business logics. Uh, so this is the basic concept of cache. And if you are interested, you can read more details on Spring documentation or there are, there are many resources available on the web. Fine, now let's uh, dive into our analysis. Here we have two MIFA 6 instances, uh, one with uh, caching enabled and the other one with no cache. So, in the recent activity tab, um, we can actually see what hap what happens on the server side uh, on MIFOS X. So, for an example, let's say uh, here's the initialization of MIFOS X. There are so many calls to uh, you know server side uh, endpoints, and uh, likewise. So, let's use this REST client plugin for Firefox to send requests to uh, MIFOS X instances. So, first I am going to send a request to non-cache instance of MIFOS X and uh, I am going to retrieve office template. Uh, office, Office's template is one of the most frequently used endpoint in MIFOS X. That's why I have chosen that. And uh, so let's just send that request. So here I got the response and uh, so let's dive into a Spring Insight recent activity tab and here we have the uh, Spring Trace and uh, here is the uh, actual details that has happened on the uh, server side. So here we have a security filter chain, 
Spring Fig security field chain. There's a tenant detail service uh, which is used to load the tenant. And here is a basic authentication filter which uh, which we have a JDBC call to app user officers roles permissions and again for officers and uh, uh, here we have the actual API endpoint officers API resources and uh, here we have the service layer uh, which is office read platform service IP and uh, here is the actual JDBC call that calls the that calls on the service layer. So uh, totally the processing time is sixty one milliseconds. Uh, let's send that request again. And okay, so here is the trace. It's seventy seven milliseconds now. Uh, again we have the security filter chain uh, loading tenant again there's a basic authentication filtering you can see these JDBC calls are actually not needed this time because if you cache that values then we can actually go to that uh, cache storage and see whether the, those values are exist on, on that cache uh, so here also we have the JDBC call. In my case, uh, the JDBC server is on my local machine. So the values will be quite, you know, different than a scenario where the JDBC, you know, than the, the database hosted on a, a, a different server. Fine. So now we see that each and every time I send to a send a request to a non-cached endpoint, uh, it will actually execute the method and return that value. Uh, so now let's now let's try to see what will happen if we send that request to the cache uh, MIFOS X instance. So here I send my request to the cache instance. So here is the response. If you can see that the processing time time is uh, quite large this time. So this is the actually the first time that I've sent that request to the uh, cached endpoint. So actually it's uh, 1.5 seconds, nearly 5.1.5 seconds, and uh, you can see. Uh, all the authentication filtering uh, here authentication filtering happens here and uh, this is the API endpoint uh, this is the service layer we have the JDBC call here right fine now let's send that request again to that cached endpoint and see what happens this time the response is quite fast so uh, let's just refresh this one here's the trace now it's 15 milliseconds as you can see the in the previous one it's where is so it's 77 milliseconds at the seven time second uh, time for the first time it's 61 second time it's 77 this time uh, first time nearly 1.5 milliseconds this time 15 milliseconds so let's see what actually happens so you can see that there is no security filtering JDBC calls uh, it's just the tenant loading there is no actual JDBC call happening on uh, data service layer so what actually happens here so as I mentioned earlier the first time Spring will cache the value if, the, if that value not exists in the cache then then we request that particular value for the second time it will return that value without going into JDBC layers so this is a huge performance improvement in, in terms of uh, in terms of API request processing uh, this is especially a uh, kind of uh, and, uh, an advantage from, for multi-tenant environment 
imagine our, our, our database hosted on different server then then this can this can improve the performance enormously so I'm going to send that request again just to clarify uh, whether it's working correctly so I, I want to refresh this tab again to see the trace so here it's 18 milliseconds uh, previously it's 15 but anyways now it's in 15 to 20s uh, but on the on the non cached instance it is uh, 60s to 100s so here again we don't have any JDBC calls I'm going to send that request again and I'm going to refresh the tab so here it's 15 milliseconds so now we are clear that this is actually cached endpoint and what's going behind the scenes and and uh, we are very clear that this can actually add value to uh, improve the performance of Mico 6 so uh, fine so this is about caching uh, so there's a question that will come to your mind what 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 if uh, something changed here what if something changed on these officers if someone changed uh, these parameters is 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 the cache value will get that uh, change uh, parameter it, it will, how how can it be updated so so that's mechanism called cache eviction and i'm going to showcase that as well here. Okay, now I'm going to create office here and uh, I'm going to show you what will happen on the server side when, when I when I create a uh, office on the cached endpoint. So uh, it will be the same URL uh, uh, and it will be a post request. I have to add a JSON content type here and uh, I have few details here. So I will change this name parameter because I have created that one earlier. Let's change this to set office. Um, let's send that request. So here we got that got the reply from response from the server side that office created successfully. And uh, also we can update the recent activity tab. So here's our post request. Uh, we didn't cache the uh, right platform services, so we have JDBC calls here. But uh, as you can see here, we don't have any authentication JDBC calls happening here. Fine. Uh, so now let's see. Uh, by sending the get request to the office officer endpoint uh, to check whether the, the the created office will be there at the response so I'm going to send that request so here's my response so here's what I've created it's me for said office and uh, let's see what is spring captured about that uh, so now it's 79 milliseconds though the though the particular endpoint is cached it's now 79 milliseconds uh, so here we have a basic authentication but there is no JDBC call in the authentication filtering and uh, here we have the API endpoint and uh, here we got the service lay JDBC call because this time we have created an office uh, which actually caused the cache to evict the entire cache and uh, this time when we when we send the request with the same parameters uh, when Sprint checks uh, the cache for a possible hit there's no actually actual value in the cache so it has to fetch those data from the office database and uh, it will store that office values in the cache and then will return that response uh, 
let's see what will happen if I send that request again so I get that me first head office here and let's see now it's 9 milliseconds it's very fast now so here you can see there's no JDBC call happening on the service layers this that's only the API endpoint so what actually happens is when you create an office uh, it will cause the cache to office cache to evict the all or the entire cache and when we send a request after creating the office it will look for the cache for the particular value and if there's no hit then it will execute the JDPC operations or whatever the business layer logics and then it will store that value on the cache and when when we send the request to the second time it knows that uh, this is a cached value and it will not execute the method uh, and it will send that cached value direct, directly to the front end uh, so let me send it again just to clarify things here so again we have 16 milliseconds now we are in 9 to 20 range so it's quite considerably a huge performance improvement to me for sex uh, platform mm, so uh, this is basically what I'm I went to showcase in this demonstration uh, so if you have any questions or any doubts or any clarifications to be made uh, you can directly email me or you can comment on my wiki page or if you are interested in what's going to happen in the next phase uh, you can always read the wiki page uh, just to summarize uh, what my next step is uh, is to expand this cache storage uh, to a distributed system like eh cache mem cache or spring gem file uh, yeah that's it thank thank you very much for watching the video